Good evening, this is Ali Tarnishi, the host of Connect with Ali's show, where we invite a local guest and a guest from across the world to have a meaningful conversation and to dive into understanding what dice mean from Canadian and immigrant perspective. And dice, by the way, is diversity, inclusion, community, and equity. And today I have this amazing guest. I have my friend Michelle Richards, and I have my friend Bisawa Alfred. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Lady first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Michelle Richards, and I'm from Moncton. I'm French Acadian, very proud of that. And um, I was a teacher for over 25 years, and I am a registered reflexology therapist and an emotional fitness coach and instructor. And I'm enjoying every minute of that. So thank you for having me on the show, Ali. Nice to have you, my friend. <laughs> my friend, uh, Bissau. Yes, I'm really glad to be here meeting with Michelle. And I'm from Cameroon. And I've been here for about eight years. Uh, I have a small business designed from Africa. I've been working you know, into a diversity and inclusion projects with some friends and in the community as well. And now um, I mean, I've, I've, I've been working for Celtic Transportation for about six years. And now I'm working in the business of helping people achieving their financial goals and living healthier lives. Amazing, mm. yeah. amazing Beautiful. diversity right here. We have the camera woman from UK, Europe. We have the producer <laughs> from Kapili and uh, Canada and Michelle from Canada and Africa, Morocco, Cameroon. And I really love this and tell me what you think about Verna once said, diversity is being asked to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance. That's mm -hmm. really powerful, like diversity, I will repeat that to the beautiful audience that's watching. Diversity is being asked to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance, which is being included. What do you guys think about this, this, let's, this statement? Let's, let's go dancing. <laughs> let's go dancing. Let's be included. Of course. Let's go. Of course. Let's go. Of course. Yes, for real. <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 it's really true. Like diversity is like being invited to the party. So the whole, everybody. So we are in a party. Mm -hmm. Like here we have Africa, we have Canada, we have Europe, we have everybody. But inclusion is being asked to dance. Mm -hmm. How true is that? Yeah, it is true. <laughs> I think it's, it's true in many different ways. Um, you know, dancing takes, uh, you have different styles of dancing as well. Right. And it's just kind of fun to be able to mm -hmm. dance. So you're doing all of that in a wonderful way. So being able to be diverse, no matter who you are, from whatever walk of life, and being able to feel included. And that's very important. Yeah, it is very important. I kind of have a lot of different thoughts in my mind of different places that I've been, where there have been dances, and so definitely it is important, yeah. Mm, amazing, I love that. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's, um, it's like you said, you know, inviting to dance, right? <laughs> and like Michelle said, dancing, you know, we, we used to have a caravan soiree here mm -hmm. in Moncton, and it, the whole concept, I really love it from, my, from, from some friends. And the whole concept is about music from all over the world, where you can request your music and everybody would dance mm -hmm. on that music. And you can even showcase your you know, dancing and all that as well. So again, diversity is, we all see diversity. Like, you can see that around, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the nature, you know, you have trees, you have this and that. They're all diverse, mm -hmm. but again, are we living together? Are we inviting the other person to dance with us? Are we going to the other person to ask to dance? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, teach me how you, how you dance, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I like food and always is, what do you eat? Yeah. What do you, you know, what do you eat in your culture? Mm -hmm. Just tell me or it's, teach it's, me it's something. St start the conversation and e stuff, yeah. E exactly, yeah. and that's the type of uh, icebreaker that I kind of use sometimes. And yeah, it's, diversity is there. Again, we need to work more on bringing people together mm -hmm. and considering where we're coming from and share that, you know. Mm. What's, uh, what's that uh, soiree called? Like, I, I remember it used to be a few years ago. Yeah, like, ca caravan soiree. And also that's like have all people from all over the world and yes. uh, they come together and dance to that. Uh, exactly. 
Amazing. That's really resonate with the with, <laughs> with, with, with with this quote. Like, yeah. uh, imagine you have like people from all over the world, mm -hmm. and each one have to bring their own music or, or or request their own music from the DJ. From the DJ, there's not no music prepared. The DJ is just waiting for people to come to him and give him the titles and the person, whatever, and then he plays that. Oh, amazing! <laughs> that's just like. Uh, that's really like that's included. You feel like included, uh, mm -hmm. and when people really include you and ask about who you are and ask about the food mm -hmm. and ask about the music, you feel like they really listen to you and care about you and they want to know more. And that's that's right. about the inclusion. Exactly. It's interesting because actually, if you think about cultures, it all these different dances, all these beautiful different dances, and what the, what's the purpose of? Well, there's a lot of different purposes, but one of the purposes of these dances. Mm -hmm is inclusion of their own culture, their own, you know, group or village or whatever that might have been. Mm. Uh, dancing is actually, that's a beautiful quote with a lot of different meanings to it too. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, dancing of idea, dancing. dancing of thought, dancing of everything, and that's, that's really... Um, it brings very, back freedom too. 100%. In, in dancing, there's freedom, complete freedom. That's right. Mm -hmm. Being free. And it's, I mean, it's funny because dancing, we dance on music and on sound and yeah. rhythms. And you can't just make a music with one sound. I mean, True. you need many to you know, mm -hmm. have the melody and have somebody who's probably singing this and somebody is singing <laughs> that. <laughs> and to put that together and you, know, you have your music or mm -hmm. your song or whatever. So it's... Uh, it's uh, really interesting. I mean, music and dancing, I think it's just for that. Even the piano, you look, there's all kind of notes, you know, the black and white, the mm -hmm. guitar you have. I mean, you cannot just make, <laughs> you know, music with one, one string of the guitar, right? It's true. So that's really, yeah, mm -hmm. that's Inclusion how I see it. Inclusion and diversity. It's diverse, what, what you just said there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these different instruments. 100%. I really somebody shared with me the other day, <coughs> like about, uh, I asked her about diversity and she said like, it's like a, if you have different color, will make a beautiful painting, a beautiful canvas. Mm. But if you have one color or two color, it will, it will still make a nice painting, but it will be, <laughs> it will be not the same. <coughs> if you have True. like blue, if you have red, if you have green, if you have white, if you have black, it will mm. make a nice canvas. But when you have like one color or two color, it's it's totally different exactly yeah. and that's really really uh, paint the picture of diversity you could talk for an hour on this one <laughs> exactly <laughs> we're, 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 exactly we're, 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 we're painting we just <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're just having like uh, <laughs> and this question that i would like to ask effort to foster diversity without equitable practices and intentional inclusion will always fall short. I will repeat that. And also for all the beautiful audience, you can leave any comment and stuff like that when this posted. Effort to foster <coughs> diversity without equitable practices and intentional inclusion will always fall short. We could talk as much as we want about diversity. But if it is no equitable practice and intentional inclusion, What's the point? Anybody can uh, comment on this statement. It's, it's very powerful. So it is powerful. And when I first read it, I will say something. I thought to myself, uh, who's the audience that watches, for example? Who, who are the people that we would love to see them being able to embrace this concept of diversity, equity, inclusion, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have people and I thought of my father-in-law, love him to pieces, brilliant man. But if I read him that sentence, he'd go, what? Right? So what is inclusion? Inclusion is making sure, ensuring that all people, no matter who, no matter the age, no matter the race, no matter what, all human beings feel like they belong. They are a part of. So what, what is diversity, inclusion, and equity? I am a part of something. And I don't just feel like an equal. I feel more than just an equal. I'm truly a part of the whole. Mm, I love that. It's very powerful. 
Can you repeat that again, please? Just so that I can refresh my mind again. Because <laughs> yeah. Effort to foster diversity mm -hmm. without equitable practices and intentional inclusion will always fall short. That's right. So what I was wanting to listen, what I wanted to listen again is uh, the effort because of inclusion and intentional, right? Because we know there's diversity. That's, we can talk about that. We can see that all around the city here, the yes. community. <clears throat> Sorry. But what are the intentions to bring people together, of bringing people together? Mm -hmm. And you know, do, do we include people intentionally, or it just happened accidentally that, OK, yeah, you know, you part of the thing, and I just invited you to dance because there's not many people here to dance with me, so that's mm -hmm. how you're dancing not because I want you to dance. Yeah. You see <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's uh, the part where we need to f f put our attention to, like intentional. It has to be something that, okay, we have to be aware of and make sure that, okay, if I'm somewhere or whatever, I need to make sure people are included. Everybody is part of the dance, right? I have to invite you to dance, mm -hmm. not because there's not many people at the party, <laughs> right? But mm -hmm. because it's, intentional, I, I, I mean that, right? So I think that's where uh, there is a kind of game changer because diversity is just a fact, but inclusion, it's mostly as a, as a choice or piece of, uh, <coughs> mind, uh, how can I say that? Uh, it's a mindset, kind of. Mm -hmm. So you set up your mind to make sure that everybody is included, not accidentally, but intentionally. Mm. I really love that. That's what you both share about intentional and to be aware. And mm. it's not just because I'm doing it. I'm inviting you so people say, oh, he is really focusing about diversity. So people say, oh, they are really embodying diversity and they are diverse in their company or they are diverse in, in what <laughs> they are doing so they get attention. Yeah. But what Michelle shared earlier about a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. I feel I am part of something. Exactly. When you make people feel they are part of something, they feel they are appreciated. That's right. They feel they are recognized. And when they, are, they feel they are recognized, they thrive. Right. And I shared before the show with Michelle, like if you invite people to your house, I said, I'm going to invite you all for supper. And everyone show up. And you have three different tables. This table is special for people that I care about. The other two table is sitting there, and just because people say, he's really diverse, he invites all people. Mm. <laughs> but when people come, I treat them totally different. I sit with them at the table, talk to them, treat them well, the other people ignore treatment. When people leave, they won't remember like the quality of the food you served. Mm -mm. What they will remember, they will, the way you treat them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's exactly what, what, what you mentioned about the dancing, my friend, it's mm -hmm. like, I'm inviting him just because I don't have anybody to fill the, <laughs> the dance floor. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Something comes up for me when I, when I listen to that too. And, and I believe that we, we don't foster uh, discernment and intuition at a young age. Mm. Uh, to foster, like, to be able to walk into a room and to notice if somebody is alone or lonely or sad. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to notice that and to go to that person. It's the same concept, no matter whether, what, again, it's, it's breaking the barriers of even color. Like, when I look at people, I don't see something different. I mm. see exactly myself in, it's like a mirror mm -hmm. to, to look at. I mean, we're all miracles. Every one of us was born. It's, it's a miracle that we're even here today, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so what would it look like if children were able to learn how to foster and have a better discernment and awareness of the people within the room, within the, the area, and to just be there present for them, right. that would make a big difference. I don't mm. think anybody would go without dancing. 100%. Mm -hmm. Really love that, to foster at an early age. Because children learn by action, not just by, mm -hmm. by word. That's right. Yes. And we really teach them, like, try to share. And children probably, they, they do a better job than <laughs> us. <laughs> well, if you put children together, <coughs> playing together, 
with, with different people from different culture, with Chinese, with different people, they will play. Tell the parents, come and say, don't play with that. Don't do that. Don't mm -hmm. share. Then the children start to have that, 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 that notion. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe you shouldn't play with that kids. Why? Mm -hmm. But the children, they are born with that, with that, with that uh, stuff at early age. They are exactly. known to be like including and sharing and caring about the other people. But yes. adult wrong stuff because uh, this, mm -hmm. it's their ego, their way of seeing things. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, like, you know, and with kids, again, it's just when we usually do workshops with woven cultures, our team, mm -hmm. we went to schools, and kids, they don't see colors different and all no. kind of things, and sometimes I felt like, I felt like instead of teaching them or doing the workshops, I was learning from them, mm -hmm. because they don't, have, they don't have any filter mm -hmm. to see you like this or like that. Mm -hmm. They might be innocent saying some t things, and then it depends how adults around them react to that, mm -hmm. right? So it's really important to have that from from small from mm -hmm. small age, from small age. Yes, absolutely. Mm, love that. It's really love it. Like fostering at early age is mm -hmm. is the key. Now that will bring us to the next question, <laughs> which is how does equity support diversity and inclusion? How does equity support <coughs> diversity and inclusion? Sometimes equity, like I feel like I have sameness. I have uh, like the same access to resources and opportunity like anybody else. And equi I feel equitable to do stuff. So how equity, how does equity support diversity and inclusion? I mean, you have to understand what equity is first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because that's what, you know, I went again back and checked <laughs> when you said the equations, <laughs> just to make sure that, you know, I have it straight. <laughs> because equity is just not equality. Equal, uh, equality Correct. is just, you know, we all have, we all starting here, mm -hmm. right? Same page. Same page, mm -hmm. right? But we don't consider our life's conditions. Mm -hmm. We don't consider our, you know, you know we, can, we can have just crush, somebody with crushes, but we all on the same starting line. But mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to fly, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be there just with the crushes trying to to follow up. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the equity because equity will be putting me with somebody who's probably at the same with Level. the same life condition as me. Mm -hmm. Or to wait that the guy or the lady heals first, then we can <laughs> run together, right? Or give them something to empower that person in order for us to be at the same level, not only where to start, but with our lives, conditions as well. Mm, good point, really good point. So yeah. aligning people with the same level so everyone have a chances to thrive, not based on their race, not based on their condition, not based mm -hmm. on any other thing. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring all, all of us to the same level before we start. Right, so it's not about putting us together to start with, but mm -hmm. to bring us all at the same level first mm -hmm. before we start the race. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's in part why they probably started the Paralympics, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the Olympics and the Paralympics, so that they're able to have, you know, whichever ability paired with the same abilities and mm -hmm. then moving forward together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Does it make one group better than another? Well, not necessarily. Like I, I saw Oscar Pistorius, the guy who was running with, uh, That's right. you know, mm -hmm. the, the prothesis. amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So he was running with other people like you and I, mm -hmm. but he had those legs, artificial legs, that gave him, you know, that empowered yeah, him yeah. to be, to be, you know, to come back to that same level to race with people who, you know, yeah. yeah. So I would say that it doesn't make, there's no group that is better than another group. It, it, we're all different. Mm -hmm. That's the diversity within. Yeah, we're all we're different. We're different. Mm -hmm. And if we really truly want to embrace the concept of inclusion is to allow the fact and equity, which equity means being fair. It's being fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in all of that, which again comes back to, we can bring it back to childhood, to education, being fair with all the kids within a school system, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So that if some children are prone to wanting to become mathematicians, but others just cannot succeed in math 
-hmm. However, perhaps for them it's art, uh, some form of art. So how to develop and again foster that ability that people have, whatever that ability may be. Right. Some people may have multiple, being, some people have fair, one being, or two. Being fair, being fair being we fair. are going to jump to our break and we'll go back <laughs> to the point, being fair and equity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, it's amazing. Huh? Hello, hello, this is Ali Tarnishi at Connect with Ali Show. And here we have this uh, beautiful, amazing guest. And we are just discussing diversity, inclusion, community, and equity. And Michelle was sharing about equity is being fair and fairness. And uh, we stopped there. Our break, we couldn't go without our break. So we take two minutes. So carry on, Michelle, my friend. About I, I kind of forget. <laughs> but I was so just saying about whatever. how does equity support diversity <coughs> and inclusion? And you were mentioning about uh, fairness, like mm -hmm. to be fair and to be stuff like that. And that, that's what the word equity mm -hmm. more or mm -hmm. less means, is mm -hmm. to be fair. Exactly. Offering fairness. So I, I suppose I heard somebody say, like, if you have, uh, you know, uh, children who are joining a baseball team, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you make sure that you're fair within that group of kids? What do they need to play baseball? They need the cleats or the shoes. Mm -hmm. They need the equipment. So you make sure that everybody's got the same, you know, the same. So that's a good question because that would kind of be like equal, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So what would equity look like in that concept? I really like when you said, like when you equip them all with the same thing, everyone have access to the resources, everyone have like all the equipment, they are all equal at that sense. So when they are competing, when they are playing, mm -hmm. nobody left over and mm -hmm. being judged for not doing their job because if he's not equipped with the equipment, who is to blame? To blame the coach or whoever or his parent that they are not providing them. So equity mm. is, pro is, is definitely support diversity and inclusion if it is everyone have get the same chance and have access to the resources so everyone thrive at the same time. Yeah, I think it's more like equality. To me, that's mm -hmm. what I've, uh, I feel like it's more about equality is just the same opportunity, mm -hmm. the same chance to do something. But I remember, let's say we went you know, in different high schools. Mm -hmm. In your high school, they gave you access to a lot of tools mm -hmm. to work with maybe in the chemistry class and all that. But to my high school, we didn't have access to these tools. But then when we get to the university, they will give us the same opportunities to do something. But you're ahead of me because you had these tools in your high school mm -hmm. that I didn't have. So we kind of equal at the university where they're giving us the same chances or opportunities, but we don't necessarily have the same background mm. to say that, okay, to be equi equitable, mm. We then have to make sure that you have the same training like the others mm -hmm. to make sure that when we get to the university, we are the same level to start getting this into these opportunities. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. Mm -hmm. 100%, 100%. Just like uh, as uh, my friend Alfred shared, like if we really, it's like you passing an exam and some people have already access and get like the, 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 the get prepared ahead of time and right. the other one didn't and you put the paper of the exam and one get like A, one get B, one get the stuff. So there's no equality here, there's no equity here. So yeah. when you get a job, the person who get A probably will get a good job. Yeah. And the other person he didn't give a chance. Yeah, not because you were you were weak or you were not smart, mm -hmm. but because you were not you were not give the, given the same tools mm -hmm. as the other person same to get treatment. prepared mm -hmm. in order to Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly, 100%. And that's exactly poor at where our question comes from. Which will take us to the next question. How can we encourage people to honor the uniqueness of each other? How can we encourage? And uh, I think we mentioned that earlier a little bit about 
children? How can That's we right. encourage people to honor the uniqueness of each other? Yeah. I'd say that, that that really is where it starts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it starts in the home. But if the home is not ready to take that on, then it goes to the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the school is not ready to take that on fully either, it falls on every person who has that passion to show it through example. Mm -hmm. So the only way a person can really honor is by doing it themselves. It starts with me. And that, that brings me back to, I guess, you know, like even our course that we took this past year. It's like, it starts with me. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak the big, beautiful words, but if deep down inside I'm not practicing what I'm saying, mm -hmm. then it's not going to go anywhere. And it's almost like that little snowball effect. A small little snowball in that perfect snow. So mm -hmm. the perfect condition. And if we take a look at life really, when has life in, in all of the history books, when has it ever been perfectly diverse and perfect inclusion? Is there ever a time that you can think of when that existed? <laughs> I'm just, sad. I'm just sad to say it will never happen, but at least we can strive to get there. Yeah, you and know. I think that's where I was kind of going, is if you take a look at all these thousands of years that we have history, mm -hmm. historical documentation, there, I mean, people fighting, cultures fighting, uh, maybe not countries way back then, but, you know, these kingdoms fighting, it was always about power. So if we take a look at today in 2021, yeah, perhaps it would be ideal if we could just snap our fingers mm -hmm. and everything would be just perfect and ideal. But we've come a long way. We, we may have a long way to go, but mm -hmm. why look at that if it starts with me right now? And if every little me mm -hmm. starts with that concept of honoring that all people, uh, it's okay for dif you know, diversity and differences and it's beautiful, and inclusion, and then the concept of equity within. That's my two cents worth. Mm, I love that. I <laughs> love that. That's really interesting, the way you said, you know, it all comes from home, and goes to school, and so on, and so on, and then the cycle start over again, right? And that's one of the reason why, reasons why we started with women cultures, because we wanted that cycle to stop at somewhere, and start over somewhere else, you know, to get mm. you know, a new beginning for, for these kids, and we were teaching the kids in order for them to go back home with whatever we taught them mm. and tell their parent, oh, I saw this black guy to that school. He, he told me <laughs> this and that. And the parent would be, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? And sometimes we don't realize that kids, as you say, they, they watch the parents, they listen. Mm -hmm. They don't repeat in front of the parents. Mm -hmm. But when they get to school, yeah, they you'll be surprised what you hear, right? Mm -hmm. And you blame the kids, but you don't blame the parents home where the kids heard it from, or the, in the community, right? Because we have a concept we call Ubuntu in, in Africa, meaning uh, I am because we are, yeah. and because we are, I am. So the kids is not the parents' kids. What it called Ubuntu? Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. Mm. So mm. the kids is not the parents' kid only. It's the community's kid. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. it's not just the, the parents' role to educate the kids, but mm -hmm. it's a community role to yeah. educate the kids in the community. So that's how I see it. And if the community is not smart enough or whatever, you know, aware about all these things, we're always going to have issues. Mm. It kind of comes back to the <clears throat> dancing again. You know, welcoming all dances within one group just welcoming dancing, no matter what kind of dance, no matter what kind of music that is, mm -hmm. that is able to you know, foster that, that sense. It comes back to that again. Exactly. It reminds me of a story that I heard, and I'm not sure which, I, I believe it's an African country that it's part of the culture. It's a really beautiful story. Uh, when um, the mother has the child, that they, there's a, a life song have you ever heard of that? Life like a song? song that is sung over the child and this is the song that belongs to that child. And whenever that child, as that child <coughs> grows up, 
something happens and the child may have gone away from you know the the concept of of the society the family's values etc the whole entire village the whole tribe comes and sings that song around the child or the adult at this time mm. to remind him or her of their life song that's right and i'm i'm not sure if i'm quoting this correctly but i remember reading that story it was such a beautiful it's so in inspiring that's what inclusion is about. It comes back to the child. Yes, they're going to see something from the home, but there's nothing that stops the education system, which has a majority, uh, a lot of time that they spend with the child, to really foster uh, that concept of inclusion, love, mm -hmm. awareness, difference, but difference in a sense of beauty, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> the, the colors are not all the same. I, I look at your shirt and it's like, what a beautiful <laughs> shirt. Let's Thank take you. a pan on that shirt. Thank I you. mean, that's like beautiful. <laughs> and those colors all together make it so beautiful. Well, that's what life is with everybody on this planet. 100%. Every culture, every tribe, every everybody. Just it's that, t that shirt, th those colors, that beautiful pattern right there. 100%. Yeah. I really love what you shared, Michelle, and uh, my friend Alfred. It's how to honor the uniqueness in each one of us. It starts with me and start that ripple effect. And that ripple effect starts when I recognize and each one with their identity. Mm -hmm. Like, I am African, I am Muslim, I am Christian, or I'm Jew, or whatever you are, you recognize their identity. Mm -hmm. And when they feel they are recognized, they will feel their uniqueness will, will, will thrive. If you have somebody with, 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 with condition, mental condition or different thing, or disability, and you feel recognize them, they will feel they are recognized. That's their uniqueness. You don't ignore them or exclude them because of their disability or because of their color, because of he's black or he's Muslim or he's Christian or he's Jew or he is mm. from different country or he is from different race. So that's what recognizing uh, that uniqueness by really accepting them and recognizing it. Mm -hmm. And that just will bring us to the next question, that how can we challenge stereotype and promote sensitivity and inclusion? I will repeat that, that again. Mm -hmm. How can we challenge stereotype yeah. and promote sensitivity and inclusion? Well, <laughs> that's, I have to turn uh, my hat on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's an interesting one. You know, bias is just uh, us having some kind of life experiences, and we base our judgment onto that to mm -hmm. how we see people. Mm -hmm. And to challenge that to me, and it's just about asking questions, not like ask gen genuine, I mean, genuinely, like, it's not about coming to Michelle and say, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's your name, what's your name? <laughs> Just because you look different to me, I started to probably kind Unter of... Intermediate, uh, intermediate. Exactly. <laughs> intermediated. Not because you want to know, but because you want to show that you... Uh, you care. Kinda. Yeah, exactly. You have to show that you care, mm -hmm. that you really like to, to learn about mm -hmm. a person and listen to the person. And I think the bias is just about that. Like sometimes we don't, we all have biases. Like we do, we all do. Mm -hmm. But to me now, I check it every time. You know, I don't want to assume that you're from here or there mm -hmm. and whatever, because one of the questions we ask at the end of the workshop is, how does the Canadian look like? Yeah, I, I didn't have any answer so far, but I'm yeah. still waiting, <laughs> right? Like who's Canadian? Who can define who's Canadian? When you look at me, how do you know I'm not a Canadian? Mm. Oh, when I, you know, mm -hmm. when you look at her, many kids will say, yeah, she looks like a Canadian, because that's the image they have on the TV and all that. That's the impression that's out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they see somebody like him, they might say, hmm, he's probably from here, until he says something. And then say, oops, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but again, who, who, who's, I mean, who, who said this is kind of Canadian we'd like, or this is the type, mm -hmm. you know, Canadian type we have, or, you know, it's just mm -hmm. 
I think the bias is really to challenge is just to ask questions. Asking questions. Yeah. My friend Michelle, uh, back re to you. Reread re the question again. There's a couple of things that came up, please. <laughs> How can we challenge stereotype and promote sensitivity and inclusion? So challenging stereotypes, I'm, I'm not sure <coughs> that it's really going to be something that we're going to succeed at doing if we put too much focus on that. There are stereotypes of one type and there are stereotypes of another. So um, some are very bad mm -hmm. stereotypes and some are an, an assumption, I guess. It comes back to that word mm -hmm. assumption. It doesn't mean that it's bad. The word sensitivity in there is a word that I think we need to be to take and try to understand it a little bit better. In a sense that if I'm too sensitive, again, it's going to come back to me. <laughs> I can talk about how do I change the world, but really the world will change if every me starts to change. Mm. So if I take a look at myself and I recognize myself as being a person who's too sensitive, I take things too personally, then I need to go inside and I need to do that work. Because the sooner that we are not too sensitive, we will be more tolerant and acceptable, accepting of other people as well. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be someone who's maybe not kind, because that's part of our world. We live in a world where there are people who love, deeply love, mm -hmm. some love, and some don't <coughs> love, and some hate. And that's unfortunately part of the world that we live in. So if I choose to be part of the world that either deeply loves or love, mm -hmm. loves, then I start with me. I don't want to be oversensitive. Someone's going to say something that's not kind. I want to be able to just I let it slide off my back. My husband would say, if you, if you hear a comment and you can allow it to slide off your back, like a duck does with water, because if a duck allows water mm -hmm. to come in and penetrate, well, it's always like come to this feathers. when you are seeing beautiful it's stuff. It comes to a break time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. So it's 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 a whole thing to that to that thought, my friend. It's it's really uh, amazing what you are sharing. I love it. Yeah. And uh, we are coming after to a break. But I just would like if you have any comment or anything share it with us about diversity, about inclusion, community and equity, and also about those questions, please share that. We'll be right back. Hello, hello, welcome back to this amazing, meaningful conversation with this amazing guest we, ha we have here at Connect with Ali Show. And as a reminder that we are discussing diversity, inclusion, community, and equity. And if you have any question, please, or any comment, please leave it there. And we will go back to dive into understanding diversity from a Canadian and immigrant perspective. And what you were saying, Michelle, earlier? That was amazing what you were sharing about. Yeah. <laughs> forget that again. How can we, you forget that. Huh? We were talking about, about uh, sensitivity and inclusion and the story type. And you mentioned really a good thing about, about fostering it at an early age from mm -hmm. children and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's when we really educate our children and share with them that we really eliminate that from happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sensitivity. I think uh, when we were finishing it, it, it's really about focusing on me. And if I'm, if I'm able to bring to the table mm -hmm. a person who, being myself, that I'm including others as I'm including myself, mm -hmm. I love diversity, and I bring that, and there's a whole bunch of me's, these me's are like that snowball effect, that little, mm -hmm. that little snowball, it's the perfect weather, it's the perfect time, it's 2021, the 21st century, I mean, what other time in our world could we connect the way that we're connecting? So this is like a perfect opportunity to be able to have these conversations and to start with me, whoever me is, and that little snowball all of a sudden becomes a big snowball. Ripple effect. A ripple effect. Yeah. Mm, yeah. A, a tidal wave, I guess, but a, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing how we see reflection in, 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 in others. It's so many of me, but in, in, in the, in, not in the mm -hmm. sense that me everywhere, but just like, it's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. If, if yeah. I treat people the same way I want to be treated, if I see people, but when I look at that mirror, I have to be a reflection to the other people. I have to treat them with fairness. I have to treat them with equity. I have to treat them with, with respect. Right. And they will get back the same thing. How many times, like when we, we really walk and we walk with smile, mm. I see people smile back to us. And how many times, like we see people like, why they are like looking at me like that? <laughs> but they didn't realize that I am looking at that too. So I have, yeah. the moment they switch, I become smiling, everyone smile back to us. Yeah. So it's up to us and that me and start with that and lead that snowball, yeah. keep, keep going and the ripple effect. Exactly. It's interesting that you're saying mirror <laughs> because in our course that we took last year, you remember one of the tools in emotional fitness is the mirror. Mm -hmm. So now imagine how many people could actually look at themselves, even here in Greater Moncton, let's just say Southeast New Brunswick, mm -hmm. look at yourself in the mirror and just talk to yourself. How many people would actually say something loving to themselves at this point in time. We talked about personal and professional development a little bit earlier mm -hmm. before. You know, it's all about, and, and this is another ripple effect. Mm -hmm. If I can look at myself in the mirror, regardless of anything, mm -hmm. and I look and I can say loving words to that person that I'm seeing, well, who's back me, to me. Whoops. <laughs> Getting my, then I'm going to offer that as I, as the people around me are that mirror. I can't help but, because I'm looking in with love, I'm going to continue to look with love. Mm -hmm. But if I look at that mirror and I don't like what I see, if I don't like what I see, it's going to be hard to look at other 100%. people and to like what I see. So mm. then I become judgmental, critical. I start wanting to <clears throat> interfere in their life, change them etc. So now I'm no longer accepting diversity because mm. I'm wanting to control what's outside of me which is different. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's not dancing with people anymore. <laughs> I mean, you know, to dance with people, you have to be able to dance with yourself first. 100%. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the funny things I do almost every morning. I make, you know, <laughs> I make a funny face to myself in, the, in front of the mirror just, you know, and you have to be able to laugh at yourself and you know, talk to yourself. Don't answer though, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I do. You know? And, but the thing, it comes down to empathy. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? And putting myself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. And try to reflect from their perspectives. And sometimes I think we're asking too much <laughs> to, you know, to our community. You know, it's probably new to them. New Brunswick or Southeast uh, region here it was not the same as today. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to deal with whatever they already have or the community, our community already have as divisions into French, English, Francophone, Anglophone, mm -hmm. and all that. So sometimes I think there's too much pressure that me as somebody who's coming here to live and build something, I have to be aware of that as well. Mm -hmm. I have to work to learn about the history. Mm -hmm. Right, because coming to some, you know, coming here and not knowing what their background, 
So I will assume that they don't accept me just because they don't want to. Mm -hmm. But again, they're going through many things at the same time, and we adding up something. Say, hey, I'm I'm almost here. I want to dance with you. What's wrong with you, <laughs> right? Yeah. And also, you don't know if that person is being, you know, I don't know, had a leg broken and it's not, it, it didn't heal yet. Mm -hmm. Right, it's still dealing with that, and we add something there. Say, oh, come to dance. No, my hurt, my 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 leg is still hurting. Oh, you don't want to dance with me? Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. So I think we have to also on the other side as newcomers, we have to open our minds as well to learn about okay, what's New Brunswick history, what's Canadian history, to find about okay, what's going on, and how can I help to include them as well. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of newcomers who are just staying into their own community, right? And they don't open up. Their own bubble. Exactly. <clears throat> so they don't open up. And it's an issue as well. We have to say that because it's easy to always point that way. Mm -hmm. But we don't check ourselves, right? So to me, it's really important to go both ways because it's not about the other one doing something wrong. But you have to check, okay, what am I doing wrong? Am I accepting them? Am I coming with a smile and say, hey, my name is Alfred Bissawa, how are you? Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> are you able to go take a coffee with me yeah. or to chat, to dance, to, you know, to learn a little, a little bit more about yeah. you? Mm -hmm. And we have to do these two ways conversations. Mm -hmm. And I like this because you don't just bring one part of the community, you bring, you know, all the parts of the community together. And it's really interesting and it's really, uh, I think it's going to be helpful for, for both because what we do again with women cultures is not about educating the newcomers, but it's about educating both sides mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say, that, okay, a newcomer can have these kind of issues, but at the same time for the newcomer, we're going to say, okay, Canadians, this is how you have to deal with this, mm -hmm. right? So it's always both ways to me. Mm. I really appreciate what you're saying and I think that that's where it comes back to I look at myself mm -hmm. and you just said it it's like instead of always looking outwards and pointing outwards no matter who it's looking at me mm -hmm. what's my role in this and I appreciate what you're saying because I've not seen racism I know that probably sounds weird and I, I've had a lot of beautiful souls beautiful friends who say that they've seen it, they've experienced. I've not seen it. I'm not saying I haven't been bullied when I was younger. I guess that's the term we use today. I've had people say things that weren't right. I've had, you know, different, along the way, there have been different things. When I grew up, and this comes back to your, what you said about Moncton, about our whole region here. When I grew up, I'm 53. Not shy to say that either. <laughs> I'm 53. Uh, yeah. So, but, you know, growing, yeah, yeah, growing in, up in the 70s and 80s here, for me personally, I learned to speak both languages. Everything was good, hunky dory, English, French. I felt I got along very well mm -hmm. with my friends and they got along well with me. But just before that, at Université de Moncton, there was a lot of stuff going on between French and English with a mayor here, like there was a lot of stuff going on. People have felt, and now we don't really feel that as much, I don't think, but now we've got something different again that's coming mm -hmm. in. So it's about making that adjustment and both sides, all sides, mm -hmm. everybody needs to make it. So thank you. Thank you for sharing <coughs> what you shared. Oh, no I think that's, it's beautiful. Good point, both of you shared. I really love what you shared, my friend Alfred, mm -hmm. about sometimes immigrants stay in their own bubble and their body in Canada and their mind in their country. And that <laughs> happened to me when I, when I moved here. I was thinking with the mentality, bringing it from Morocco, like I don't want to change, I don't want to compromise, and I was wondering what's going on. So you can't fix the, 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 the problem with the, you can't fix the, 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 the problem of yesterday with the, the solution that you use in, in the, the path. Right. So I have to, to yeah. learn, I have to learn about different culture, I have to really like, just for, for a quick example, back home, like if you look at somebody in the eye, especially the elderly, it's considered disrespect <laughs> in Morocco. Yeah, I <laughs> Here, when I look at people, I don't look at people at the eyes. They, they said, they, they said, "What's wrong with you?" Like, like it's, uh, and they learn it's after. Disrespect. It's disrespect. So I was confused. <laughs> Back home, if you look at people, it's disrespect. <laughs> Here, if I don't look, what's going on? 
So I have really struggling to look at people yeah. at the eye because I feel like I am like disrespecting them. But if I put myself, <laughs> it was so till yeah. I learned, somebody told me just like if you talk to somebody, just look at them here. And you are not really looking at the eyes, mm -hmm. but it's just, so I start doing that, yeah. mm -hmm. and they learn. It's, it's a cultural thing. I learned that to to earn respect, and people really trust you. You have to look at them in the eye. So this is just a small example. Yeah. So we learn to educate ourselves. Did you know that wearing hats is disrespectful here in Moncton? Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going to take it out, but three minutes left on the show. <laughs> So no. this is just we'll, 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 yeah. So we will really move to the next question, but I really like you, you kind of cover it a little bit. How do you or will you address diversity challenge at work or community? Mm. And basically, uh, my friend Alfred mentioned it, and you mentioned it as well. The challenge is just to educate to educate ourselves. If we see something, we see like some people maybe they are grown up to do the same thing over and over. They see their friend doing it. If you add something different, it mm -hmm. will be totally different. So when you bring it to your attention, it's hard to change people. Mm -hmm. And when you just tell them something that they used to it and the assumption, so how we ch how we challenge that? Mm. Well, diversity <laughs> challenge at work. Address, I mean. How to address it? Again, it doesn't matter. Quickly, work. one minute. Exactly. No more. One minute. <laughs> one minute. Let's go. <laughs> you know, my friend, my, what you just said, my friend Jabal, Jabal Awani went through the same thing at mm -hmm. school, and the teacher was just saying like, oh, he's not paying attention. He's being disrespectful, mm -hmm. not looking at him in the eye, on the, in the eyes. And we have a video we did with one cultures, mm -hmm. actually, where we talk about that, and he's sharing his story and all that. And again, it goes down to. You know, education, asking questions, and you know, sometimes we have to teach people as well. We have to, yes. we have that responsibility teaching other people about us. Twenty seconds. Mm -hmm. Who we are, yeah. right? <laughs> and how we appreciate others. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that's the, that's the bottom line. You know, we yeah. have to teach others and be willing to learn as well. Yes. Okay. So it, absolutely. Yeah. Both way. Yeah, always. Yeah. We need to learn. We how do we how do I know as a teacher that my student when he doesn't look at me respects me? How do I know that? But if I learn it, it's like, oh, that's awesome. Thank you. So I can't read minds and that's we can't none of us can read other people's minds. I can sometimes. Can you <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's wearing the hat. He doesn't want us to read his mind. Thank you very much, everyone. I don't. Uh, 35 seconds left. That producer, he would show up here and he would kick me off. He said, 35 seconds. Okay, thank you very much. Thank amazing very audience. Much. Amazing thank guests, you. not audience. And audience for really this amazing, meaningful, honest, open conversation. Really appreciate it. We need more of this. And awareness lead to conversation, and conversation lead to change. Instead of asking why this is happening, let's say what can we do to yes. make this change. Thank you very much, everyone. And let's dice together next time. Have a good one. Amazing, my friend, guys. Good job. Good job, guys. Good job, Richard.